Welcome to the Better Farming Report, presented by Hoosier Ag Today and the Purdue Center for Commercial Agriculture. I'm Gary Truitt. The purpose of this series of reports is to provide you with practical, research-based recommendations and resources to help improve the productivity and the profitability of your farming operation. This program is being brought to you by Indiana Soybean Farmers through their checkoff in the Indiana Soybean Alliance. We certainly appreciate their support. In fact, we are going to talk about soybeans today, and with me is Sean Castillo from the Agronomy Department at Purdue and Dr. Jim Minnert from the Ag Economy Department, the Ag Economics Department at Purdue, as well as Director of the Purdue Center for Commercial Agriculture. A lot of economics going into production agriculture this year for 2016. Um, let's talk about the economics. What areas can farmers address in terms of producing a good soybean crop, hitting the yield marks they want, but minimizing those costs? Thanks, Gary. You know, I think the first point I want to make is that it's important to think about cost per bushel. In agriculture, many times we, we tend to fall into the trap of thinking about cost per acre. But if we think about it, uh, it makes a lot more sense to review it in, from a cost per bushel standpoint because that allows us to look not only at the cost of the inputs we're purchasing and applying to the field, but also the impact that it might have on yield. And it would be very short-sighted to reduce expenses per acre that also has a negative impact on yield. So our challenge here is really to use some of the best research that we've got to try and reduce production costs per bushel. And in some cases, it really might focus on actually increasing yield and maybe holding input costs constant. So that's, that's really what we want to talk about, I think. And, and I think uh, some of the research that Dr. Dr. Castile and others here at Purdue Agronomy have done can really be very helpful in, in helping us reduce our cost per bushel. And certainly, uh, John, you and I talked a lot of, in 2015 about soybean production, but most of it was how to grow soybeans underwater or are my soybeans going to survive after being underwater for six weeks or what's this funny color in beans? Hopefully we won't have those experiences for 2016. Let's focus on the 2016 crop. One of the issues that, that guys are thinking about right now is seeding rates. And that's an area you've done some considerable research on. And uh, as, as, as Jim has mentioned, cost of seed is a pretty big important factor in terms of, of where uh, our bottom line is gonna wind up this year. Talk to us about seeding rates and the impact that has on yield. And, and we'll bring Jim in to talk about the impact that has on cost. Sure, when we talk about soybeans and seeding rates and the cost, we're no longer at a place where it's 15 or $20 a unit. We're, we're now talking 50, 60, and sometimes even $70 a unit. So the cost is, is quite considerable. And when you, you factor in, that's part of the genetics, but it's also the seed treatments that, that are now added onto it. So we gotta make the best decision that we can with the inputs that are going in with the seed costs and seed treatments. And then when you look at soybeans, they have the amazing ability to, to adapt and improvise, if you will, to different growing conditions, even waterlogged soils, or they have lower plant stands, they can branch and really make up a lot of ground and still even yield well. So what we're doing right now is talking about lower seeding rates than what maybe is typical, uh, maybe typical for some of the farmers, but then still having the yield potential of every seed they've had in the past. Jim, we've talked about how seed rates, uh, seed costs have increased, and perhaps how the decisions in terms of seeding rates and plant populations, maybe we haven't given as much thought to that. This, is this a year to sit down and say, do I need to make some changes? Have I been doing the same thing maybe because I've just been doing the same thing? Is it time to sit down and, and look at your costs and perhaps make some adjustments in terms of, of how you're going to approach your, your planting of soybeans? Well, we certainly think there's some opportunities. Let, let's take a look at some of the data. So we've got a chart that shows variable production costs for soybeans here in, in Indiana. And as you look at the chart, you know, one of the things that jumps out at you is our largest cost category uh, in the variable expense uh, uh, items for, for soybeans is seed, right? 35% of our variable expenses are going to seeds, 25% um, to fertilizer, 12% to pesticide. So I like to think of it, you know, in terms of what are the big bucket items, the number one bucket out there is seed. So if we can make some improvement to try and reduce our seed cost per bushel again, uh, that can have a, a pretty positive impact on our net return at the end of the day. In fact, if we look at soybean seed cost changes over time in Indiana, this chart goes back to 2002, and as you look at it, you can see the seed costs have really increased dramatically on a per bushel of output basis. Back in 2002, 2003, our soybean seed cost per bushel output was about 50 cents a bushel. Mm -hmm. Um, the last couple of years, uh, we've been up uh, 2015, 2016, 
uh, for a lot of operations in Indiana, that number is going to be a dollar twenty or maybe a little higher than a dollar twenty. So that's a big jump mm -hmm. over a long span of time. A um, couple of things driving that. One, obviously, is we've got a lot more technology embedded mm -hmm. in those seeds today than we did back in 2002, 2003. Yeah. That's right. um, some of that could be the seed treatments, et cetera. So our challenge is to say, what can we do to reduce our cost per unit of, of output per bushel of soybeans produced? Um, and in, I think some of the research you've done, Sean, would suggest we can easily do that mm -hmm. uh, with a couple of really pretty minor changes, uh, right. a little better management, mm -hmm. uh, and thinking about it from that perspective. Definitely. Uh, we can reduce seeding rates uh, across the board in many cases. We're no longer, again, talking about it's, it used to be two bushels to the acre is what we planted, or then it, it switched to it's 200,000 seeds per acre. Uh, at least now we're talking seeds per acre, and we need to be talking reductions of 10, 20, 30,000 seeds per acre easily and still be producing great yields. And so we can talk about some of the factors that come into that. Uh, when we think about that, uh, determining the seed rate, it's really going to come down to uh, the germination, the quality, you know, how high of a seeding rate do you need to have, you know, based on the quality of that seed. Uh, also, what kind of uh, disease pressures do you have? Is there any, any varieties that have uh, issues with white mold or other diseases? Do they have a seed treatment or not to help you with some of the other diseases? Uh, equipment, and this is one that I'll spend a little bit more time later on this, but equipment can really have a major impact on your seeding rates. Uh, we used to talk about seeding rates are due to uh, different row widths. It's really more about the equipment. So whether you have a drill or an air seeder or a planter, that's what's going to cause the change in seeding rates. Uh, obviously field conditions are a big player in this. If you've got cool wet conditions or heavy residue, uh, you'll go up or down accordingly. But at the end of the day, the seed rate will change based on all these factors we just listed, but the target plant stand, plant population will not change. Again, you talked about the disease issue because we had that, uh, particularly white mold was one that came up in 2015 because of the, the weather. If you've got history of disease or even the, the, the level of soil fertility, again, which was affected in many fields this last year, how do, does that fit into the, your seed uh, population decision? So let's take white mold for instance. If you look at white mold and if you've had a history of white mold in, in the state, uh, kind of the northwest area is a, a major area that's had in in past and so you know you've had the, the propensity for it. So seeding rates should be lower. And, and the reason that we look at lower is if you have less plants, there's less opportunity for plant to plant infection. And so you have lower stands and so you have less opportunity for that infection. You also have more airflow. So as uh, some of the recommendations will come in the coming slides with seed rates, you actually might be even lower than what I'm recommending if you have a, an issue of white mold, for instance. You mentioned equipment uh, and, and you know, the number of acres, the size of your plots, the size of your rows, all kinds of these factors come into to that. How do you begin to balance that out with uh, the seeding rates that you've talked about? And, and uh, what kind of research do you have that, that shows what the possible impacts of that might be? Sure, when you look at equipment, uh, first you have to understand what you have. Uh, if you've got a drill, just understand it's not going to be equal to a planter. In other words, it's not going to meter out the seed at the same level in precision. So it's uh, down the row, and then with the drill in particular, seed depth, uh, you're going to have seed that's on top of the ground, you're going to have seed that's just right, and you're going to have seed that's two or three inches in many cases. So seeding rates for a drill, and to understand that's what you have, have to be higher so you get the same target plant stands. If you're running a planter, whether it's a 15 inch or a 30 inch, you're going to be able to uh, run a much lower seeding rate because it does a better job in precision, uh, both in placement down the row and seed depth. What about types of seed? Does, uh, did you, are there any differences in terms of whether these are conventional, whether they're GMOs? Uh, obviously you mentioned seed treatment as being an option that, that plays into this as well. Does, does that figure into that or is that pretty constant across all those? So in terms of uh, the seed type, so whether it's a conventional or a Roundup or a Liberty or any of the other ones that are coming onto the market, uh, you're usually going to be in a pretty similar range with uh, the seed rate. Now there are some that tend to have maybe what I would call a rank growth. They can get a little robust and so you need to be a little bit lower on the seeding rates on those, but that's where you talk to your seed supplier to know what they are, their growth habit, and to be able to adjust that. But by and large, we're really talking about, about the same plant stands. Okay. You guys have done some research uh, and the agronomy department at Purdue to show farmers, because, I mean, that's a tough decision to make. Do I not plant this? It's a, the, the, the die is cast, so to speak. Give us some reassurance that the, uh, the 
back up some of the recommendations and assumptions you're making? Sure. Let, let's kind of go ahead and kind of go through a few slides here that are, are showing seed cost. And we talked about times that are no longer $15, $20 units, certainly. But uh, I've got a nice little slide here that talks about seeding rates on 100000 to up to 225000 I can remember, and Jim, you and I were just talking about this, that, I mean, 200000 that was the norm. It was because they were drills. And if now you're putting in $60 a unit at 200000 that's $83 an acre. That's huge. If you look at the idea of I can reduce from 200000 to 150, that 50000 decrease on a $60 a unit basis, that's $21 an acre. Now, I haven't done it to the math of per bushel, but we could easily get to that point of how we're reducing it. Well, I think the interesting thing about some of your research, Sean, is that you're looking at uh, your research results suggest you could reduce the seeding cost per acre and actually improve yield. Sure. Uh, and that's, I think, uh, uh, a win-win situation that you don't get very often in agriculture. That's right. So. That's right. So if we were to think about what are some typical ranges of seeding rates, uh, we're anywhere from 125 to 175,000 seeds per acre. And again, we'll, we'll switch that around. Um, but that kind of gets you to the target, and I have even people talking with me this winter saying, can I seed at 100,000? Not have a plant stand, but seed at 100,000. And so there are going to be some cases with a planter and great field conditions, yeah, you can get away with it. So it's a matter of whether you want to look at a stand like this. So uh, my question for you guys is, do you think these, these stands will yield the same? So we've got one that's at 75,000 all the way up to a stand that's 185,000. Do you think there's going to be one that's going to drop off other than another? So, you know, it's, it's hard to believe that, that some of those thinner stands can yield uh, competitively with, with the thicker stands. Sure. Um, so, you know, if, if a traditional standpoint, I would probably learn, lean towards uh, uh, probably C, maybe even D, mm -hmm. right, based on history. Sure. But I think your research is going to lead me in a little different direction. That's than right. It? <laughs> that's right. And, and that's, that's going to be a real uh, mind shift here because... Guys, that's not what you want to do. You want to, the farmers want to, I want to increase yield. You plant more seeds. You plant more population. Right. That's been the conventional thinking to do, to do that. So that that's a tough sell, but yeah. you, you've got the numbers, the research to, to back it up. Yeah, so I'll just make the one point here. As we, we think about the, the plant stand, we're shooting for around 100, 120,000 plants, okay? And so if you, you think about these slides and the pictures, you have a stand of 95,000, uh, picture B, that's going to yield equal to C and D, equal to 115, equal to 185,000. And I have field trials, field scale trials, not our small plots, but field scale trials that even A at 75,000 will yield equal to any of the other ones pictured. So Sean, when you do your, your, uh, your stand uh, calculations, how far after planting do you actually like to do that? So uh, these are pictured here about V2, so that's a fairly typical time to go out and do stand counts. I like to go out a little bit earlier so then I can have an assessment if they're wor really low. If they're below 70,000, okay, do we need to do some replanting and overseeding so you have that, that right in mind? Because when you look at soybeans that are already V2, they've already made the decision to branch. Okay, so even when they just have the unifoliates out, they've already decided to branch, and so they're making up for the fewer brothers and sisters that are around there. And so that's how they're able to make up the ground, is to have more branches and then have the yield come from there. Wow. So again, your recommendation for growers, particularly this year, is don't be afraid to cut that seeding rate. That's right. That's right. Okay. And, and if you want to look at the, the brass tacks of it all, what really is coming in is it's not just pretty pictures, but it's the data that backs it up. You know, it's mm -hmm. the research that you guys talked about. Uh, here's field scale trials. And so uh, this is over across three years. We've continued it beyond this. But if you look at the kind of flat line point, that's basically 95, 100,000 plants at harvest. And that, that's more or less 100% of the yield potential. And if you even kind of draw back, you can go to 80,000, 90,000 plants at harvest and still be yielding 95 to 98% of the potential. And I don't know if people in the seedsmen in particular like to hear this <laughs> next point, but I've got other trials, half of mine in fact, on field scale trials that have no yield difference from 50,000 plants to 220,000 plants. So, you know, what we're showing here, that's uh, the kind of conservative response. 
The other ones, again, we've got the potential to, to make up a lot of ground at lower plant stands. And that's one thing you mentioned as we were talking about this. These are conservative numbers. The, sure. the, there, are, there are indications that some guys who maybe really want to get bold and push it could, could even reduce it even more. Yeah, most definitely. And if you're in a situation, a lot of guys now have seed treatments. Uh, mm -hmm. They want to have seed treatments or that's just the way they can get the variety that they want. And so they're getting an insecticide, they're getting a fungicide, they're getting an inoculant, all that on to the seed. That can even be in a case where if that's what you want and that's what you like, you can even reduce seeding rates more because you've got the protection. In particular, I'm talking more about the fungicide seed treatments mm -hmm. to help you with a lower seeding rate. Being able to reduce costs and increase yields, Jim, that's got to be an economic story that the farmers are going to be happy to hear for this well, year in particular. Well, it really is a win-win, and I think more fundamentally, though, what we're talking about is, is applying just a little higher level of management to mm -hmm. our soybeans. Um, maybe, you know, here in the eastern Corn Belt, maybe it's, it's about giving the same level of importance to soybean production that we give to corn production. Amen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought you'd like that. Yes. Um, but, Many times uh, you're going to talk in, in some f a future program, I guess, about uh, planning date. Sure. But we've had a tendency sometimes to think about corn first and soybeans second. And yeah. I think part of what your message really is about giving soybeans the same level of management that we try to give to corn routinely. And in this case, it's about seeding rate. Mm -hmm. It's about thinking about uh, are you using a planter versus a drill? Uh, did you calibrate the planter? That's right. Uh, have you fine-tuned that planter before you pulled it in the field? Have you assessed field conditions? Uh, with respect right. to your seeding rate. Yep. Those are all factors that go into being a better manager with respect to soybean production. And that's, that's how we can reduce our per bushel uh, cost for, for raising soybeans here in Indiana, Gary. All right. And as Jim has indicated, there are more programs to come on this particular issue. That's going to wrap it up for this program. We do have on the screen a number of resources for you to visit. The uh, Purdue Center for Commercial Agriculture has a great website. Who's Your Ag Today has a good website with information. We will have future programs on this subject, particularly related to soybeans and soybean management and soybean yields. We'll have information about those future programs on our website. Also, feel free to sign up for our free email newsletter, which will give you updated information on this topic throughout the, the, the week, and that's uh, you can sign up for that at HoosierIkeToday.com. Again, thanks to the Indiana Soybean Farmers and the Indiana Soybean Checkoff for sponsoring the Better Farming Series. Appreciate uh, uh, Dr. Sean Castillo from uh, Purdue's Agronomy Department being here with us today, and uh, Jim Minner from the Center for Commercial Agriculture. I'm Gary Truitt. This is Who's Your Ike Today, Indiana's Farm Network.